to be five foot three, you have to be the best. He was the smallest guy on the court, but he played like the biggest guy on the court. Here's Muggsy next to The Rock. Here's Muggsy next to Kylie Jenner. It doesn't matter who you put Muggsy next to, he looks ridiculous. He shouldn't be in the game because he's five foot three. Why do NBA players fear this man? Michael called me a midget. He was a pest and he bothered people. He doesn't belong in there to begin with. I just want to be included. How did you keep yourself from getting caught up in all that? Well, you know, uh, unfortunately I got shot when I was five. Baltimore, one of America's most dangerous cities. One of the toughest childhoods in the NBA. Crying to my mom and just telling her how cruel the kids are out there. Kids would constantly bully him. He went in the shed and grabbed his double barrel shotgun. He grew up in poverty. As a kid, you're wondering, is this how life is? He was always the shortest guy in the crowd. The bigger kids didn't allow me to play. How's a five foot three man even make it to the NBA? I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. A fight broke out. They bust the old man Chester's window. He decided to come outside and wreak havoc. And so he went in his shed and grabbed his double barrel shotgun and just started firing. And unfortunately, I was one of the kids that got shot. That's the atmosphere that we grew up in. As a kid, you know, it was a lot of drug infested areas in our neighborhood. A lot of shooting, a lot of violence. Being young, you wasn't so fully aware of everything that's going on. You just knew that things wasn't right. It was our life of growing up. I mean, no one thought they have a life expectancy past 20. I believe I grew up as hard as it get. I mean, as a kid, you're so young, you're trying to find a way, you know, how to make it out. And you're wondering, is this how life is? When you face with those type of situations, your options, you know, they're very limited, but they are options. And our option was sports. That's where that dream started to begin. I started playing it, start competing with the guys in the neighborhood. Of course, at the beginning, I couldn't get chosen. You know, that was heartbreaking. You know, I would just want to be just like everybody else, playing the game, and just want to be accepted like everybody else. I didn't really think about trying to be the best. I just want to be included. I created my own basketball game. Just got a bunch of my other friends and got the carton of a milk crate. We cut the bottom of it out, and we hung it on each end of the fence. It still got me a means of playing the game, but then all of a sudden, I start gaining a lot of respect in the neighborhood. That's where I start to become one of the guys and they start letting me participate. When I was 12, Pops got put in prison. They got caught for armed robbery. That was devastating for the entire family because my mom, she only had 11th grade education. She had four kids to deal with. Seeing my mom had to go to night school and early on had to accept food stamps. It gave me a sense of focus. My um, junior and my senior year, you start hearing these comments about, is that little kid, is he the ball boy or is he the manager? And all of a sudden they see me out there warming up with the team. There was a lot of laughter that went on in the stand. The NBA, that's the best in the world. In no way is, you know, any team will select him, or any team will think about taking him. Be just more of a, a novelty act. They invited me to a couple of the camps. All the NBA scouts, the coaches, they have an opportunity to come and watch you personally. During that particular three, four days while I was there, my stock went from projection of being picked in a late second round to all the way to the first. Select Tyrone Bowles. Oh. How's a five foot three man even make it to the NBA? He shouldn't be in the game because he's five foot three. How am I supposed to play a game with a guy of this height? It doesn't matter who you put Muggsy next to, he looks ridiculous. He doesn't belong in there to begin with, right? Oh, and Oakley shoves folks away. MJ backed off Muggsy and then shouted to Muggsy to shoot it, you fucking midget. There were a lot of doubters, a lot of haters. Felt like you still had to prove. My mom, she wasn't the one that knew about the game of basketball. She just tell me, don't listen to them. 
No one know how big your heart is. They don't know your capability, and they definitely don't know your potential. Seeing what she went through, I had to do something to make sure I could be in a position to get back. I wanted to create my own destiny, and I started to understand that I was in a position to do that. Muggsy Bogues steals the ball from Jordan. What an incredible play. We had a heart of a, a lion. He went out there and he laid it all out on the line. If you're five foot three, you're one out of seven billion. There's never been a guy your size who did it like that. Did you ever think, like, pound for pound, I'm kind of the best athlete on earth? To make the NBA, you have to be one of the five best in the world at something. Everywhere you turn, he's there. Like the Energizer Bunny. To be five foot three, you have to be the best. He was the best on-ball defender in NBA history. The very first thing I bought, I built my mom a house. That was the very first thing I wanted to do. She was so excited. Oh my goodness. You see the expression on her face now. Seeing what she went through made it more important that I had to do something positive for my life. She changed my mindset. That's what I drink. That's what I've been striving for. All the sacrifices that she had to make just to provide for her kids. For me to be in that situation, to be able to handle those keys. And words can't describe that. You know, that's mother. So, for me to be able to do that, it meant the world to me. They try to tell me what I can't be, what I shouldn't be, or who I should be. I didn't listen. I hope you don't listen either. Don't let anyone put you in a box and try to define you. When you're doing anything in life, you got to have confidence. Confidence is the key. Because you're the person that you're going to be is what you cut between these ears. And it's an unbelievable feeling when you have that much confidence in yourself because no one can touch you there. No one can be an expert on your life. No one knows what you're capable of. Don't settle for what someone thinks that you should be doing. When you believe in yourself, no one can stop your dream. No one can stop your dream.